In this course, we will learn about compressibility and its importance. An incompressible fluid flow is defined as a flow where the density is assumed to be constant. In reality, no fluid is truly incompressible. In general, if the density variation in a flow is greater than 5%, then the flow is compressible. Most flows involving liquids, such as the flow of water in a river, oil flow in pipelines, or low-speed gas flows, such as the air flow over a car, can be considered to be incompressible. However, in high-speed gas flows, such as the air flow over an aircraft or the one over a high-speed bullet train or the steam flow processed by a steam turbine to generate electricity, compressibility plays a significant role. Ignoring compressibility while analyzing such flows can lead to unphysical predictions of the flow field and of the forces that the fluid exerts on the moving bodies. So, what is compressibility? It is the fractional change in the volume of a fluid as a response to a small change in pressure. To illustrate this concept, take two cylinders, one filled with air and the other one filled with water. Close these cylinders by adding a piston on top of the fluids. If you try pushing the piston down in the cylinder containing water, you will notice that the piston does not move at all. While if you try pushing the piston down in the cylinder containing air, the piston will move for a distance before it stops and cannot move further down. This shows that the air and in general any gas is more compressible than water or any liquid. This reveals a crucial characteristic of compressibility, which is that compressibility is a material property of the fluid. The amount of compressibility a fluid can undergo depends on the molecular structure of matter and the intermolecular forces. It's easy to compare these features for gases and liquids. In gases, the molecules are widely separated and as a result, the molecular kinetic energy is greater than the attractive forces between the molecules. Gases do not have a definite volume and expand to fill the volume of the container they are placed in. In contrast, liquids are made up of molecules that are held close together by attractive forces. However, these attractive forces are not strong enough to prevent movement of the molecules within the fluid. Also, liquids have a definite volume, which is independent of the volume of the container. Let us now try to mathematically define the concept of compressibility. If we consider that the increase in pressure by pushing the piston down is a dp and the reduction in the volume of air due to this pressure is dv, we can define a property called the bulk modulus, as shown in this equation. Physically, it is the measure of resistance provided by the fluid to the applied pressure. Compressibility is nothing but the inverse of bulk modulus. Using experiments, one can determine the compressibility of different fluids. For example, the compressibility values for water and air are shown here. As you can see, the compressibility of air is 20,000 times that of water. Now, you may be thinking, wasn't a compressible flow defined as a variable density flow. But there is no density in this equation. Well, let's us fix that. If we assume 
unit mass for the fluid, since the density is nothing but the inverse of the specific volume, we can rewrite the equation for compressibility as shown here. Knowing the compressibility of the fluid, we can use this equation to determine the density variation in a fluid flow based on the applied pressure difference. So far, we have defined compressibility and its characteristics. Let's now explore the impact that compressibility can have in a fluid flow. Consider the flow of air over an airfoil at speed of approximately 200 meters per second. Using CFD simulations, we can easily compute the flow field around the airfoil. If we look at the contours of static pressure, we can see that pressure varies quite substantially throughout the domain. We can also notice the formation of a shockwave on the top surface of the airfoil, through which pressure dramatically increases. Similar trends can be seen in the density contours. If we instead perform the simulation without considering the effect of compressibility, we will get the following contours of pressure and density. As you can see, the differences are quite substantial. For the incompressible case, we do not even see the formation of the shockwave. Furthermore, there is no variation of density in the domain, as expected. Significant differences can also be observed if we compare the drag force exerted on the airfoil. These results clearly show that ignoring compressibility can lead to unphysical flow predictions. This is why it's important to learn how and when to account for compressibility in fluid flows.